election officials are still at work counting the votes. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of the uh, county election officials work late into the night, uh, and we still have work to do. So I, I want to start by saying thank you to all the staff, the volunteers who work so hard to, to count those votes uh, and are still working hard to count them. Uh, you know, the promise of democracy is that every vote counts, uh, and that has been the promise of democracy since 1787, and it's still the promise of democracy, and I intend here in Pennsylvania to make sure we keep that promise. So uh, as I said, counties continue to report results. And again, these results are coming in more slowly than they have in the past. So we have to be patient, uh, but confident that these votes are going to be counted. They're going to be counted accurately, uh, and they will be counted fully. Um, the delay that we're seeing is a sign that the system is This is a new system. We went into effect with Act 77 last year, uh, and there are three million uh, millions uh, of uh, uh, mail-in ballots uh, that are being counted. And that takes longer than the, the, uh, the, the way we used to do it with the stand-in in-person voting. So we may not know the results even today, but the most important thing is that we have accurate results, again, even if that takes a little longer than we're used to. Make no mistake, our democracy is being tested in this election. This is a stress test of the ideals upon which this country was founded. And the basic rule of one person, one vote, that still carries, and it has to carry here. Our democracy has withstood challenges before, and for over 200 years, we have upheld and strengthened our commitment to basic fairness and due process. And I have full faith that we will similarly meet this moment, and I will do everything within my power to ensure that the results are fair and that every vote is counted. Pennsylvania will have a fair election, and that election will be free of outside influences. I will vigorously, and we all will vigorously defend against any attempt to attack that vote in Pennsylvania. And every Pennsylvania, every Pennsylvanian can have confidence in the outcome of this election due to the diligence of the county election officials and the hard work of Secretary Bookvar and her folks at the Pennsylvania Department of State. So thank you again to all Pennsylvanians who voted. Rest assured, your vote will be counted. If it hasn't already been counted, uh, your vote will make a difference in this election. Uh, this is the way we elect our officials. This is the way we hire the people who are our public servants. Uh, it's a promise that we give to all Pennsylvanians, all Americans, that their vote counts. And I intend to keep that promise here in Pennsylvania. Now I'm proud to turn this over to Secretary of State Kathy Bookhorn. So I want to echo some of what Governor Wolf said about once again thanking all the, uh, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of election workers that were were and are still involved in the process of uh, enabling this great democracy in Pennsylvania and across the nation. Uh, the work they have done and continue to do is just tremendous. And, you know, I, I still, we've been talking, Department of State folks uh, were, you know, at the, our operations center, I don't know, 4, 4.30 in the morning, went to take a shower and or we're back uh, within a couple hours of that. Um, so it's been working around the clock, as are many of the counties. Um, and we've been talking about yesterday again and how incredibly smooth it's one of the smoothest least issues elections presidential elections than I I've seen in in any time that I could possibly remember and I've been in and around elections for a long time uh, as a voting rights lawyer and a poll worker uh, this was incredibly smooth and that's a huge credit to all the election workers both at the state level and at the local level and Office of Homeland Security, Department of Homeland Security, who made sure that all those things we were, that people were worried about, whether it was voter intimidation or issues at the polls, really could not have gone more smoothly in the middle of a global pandemic with all the voting reform changes that we saw from Act 77 and Act 12. So that's huge kudos to everybody involved. 
Also, uh, we are exactly where we said we would be. So we said it was going to take some time to count the mail ballots, um, and we are, we are approaching 50 percent of the mail ballots counted, uh, which is great. As you know, you can go to our uh, Election Night Returns website and the supplemental dashboard to get the uh, but there are still millions of ballots left to be counted. So the counties are working incredibly hard. You're going to see a lot of updates in the next couple of hours and throughout the day. We have been, you know, a, a lot, there were a number of counties that made some major additions in the wee hours in the morning. So if you checked kind of early on this morning, you may want to check again because there's already been uh, more ballots accounted for on our dashboard. Again, this is a process. We've got, uh, you know, somewhere, I, I don't know what the totals are going to end up at, but somewhere between 2.5 and 3 million ballots. And as I've said many times, um, we had 260,000 ballots cast by mail in 2016. So we are, we will be at 10 times the number of mail ballots. And the counties are already approaching 50% 50, 50 done. So I urge everybody to remain patient. As Governor Wolf said, we are going to accurately count every single ballot. Um, the vote count, as I've said many times, is never done on the day of election night. Um, and uh, the counties are doing this accurately and accurately as quickly as they possibly can. Um, and again, I'll also just remind everyone, military and overseas ballots are not due after election day. So next Tuesday, is the deadline for military and overseas voters to cast their ballots. And we want to make sure that not only every civilian absentee mail and valid voter is counted, but also that every man and woman who are serving our country, that their votes are counted. So thank you, and we are happy to take questions. So I think, um, you know, basically what, what you know that's been publicly reported, that's really all we have at this point, so, and I can't talk about active litigation, unfortunately. So, I, you know, you can, but as things are filed, of course, those will be publicly accessible. Okay. You have I mean, what we've been doing all along with all the litigation that's been flying this year is we have a mix of in house and, and out, outside counsel. Plus the, Plus, the Attorney General is also representing us in a number of these things. So, there's been a great team. I have to say the, the attorneys, I'm just going to give a shout out to the legal team in the Department of State who have been really put to work this year and they are amazing. So, Tim and Kat and team, thank you. Um, but we also have tremendous teams of outside counsel who have been involved in all of this. And as the governor said, uh, we, will, we will make sure that every vote is counted. Every eligible voter has the right to cast their vote. So how many counties are handling ballots that are coming in Tuesday, Thursday, Friday? How are they handling that? And is each county setting them aside? How is each county doing it? So you can go online to see our guidance. And then last night we also gave more counties, which we can forward to you. Um, it basically, it lays out the process. So you're talking about the late arriving ballots. So everything's going to be segregated. I'm not sure if you were here yesterday, but uh, the, the, all those ballots will be segregated, but they will be counted. And the counties have been given detailed instructions, which again, you could find in those guidances to walk them through how to segregate those races, those ballots. So they're already done counting their mail-in ballots received before 8 p.m., so those are going to start sooner, but they won't be reflected on the website. They won't be, like, intermingled in the website as you see it now. They will be segregated, so, but it is going to vary from county to county when they start because they're working on the other ones first. It will be reflected on the website, though? I'm unclear on that. Well, I think stay tuned on that. Yes. So on those segregated ballots, there were 500,000 ballots issued that hadn't been cast as of yesterday. Is there I'm any... sorry. Can you repeat the question? Sorry. There, there were 500,000 mail ballots issued that hadn't been cast as of yesterday. Is there a way for the state to determine how many of those 500,000 people chose to vote in person instead? Or do we need to operate under the assumption that all 500,000 could come in before Friday? So all that will be trackable, but I don't, we won't have it today. So basically between provisional ballots and the poll books and then, of course, the mail-in ballots, 
uh, you know, as you all know, like only one vote can be counted for any voter. So you'll be able to see all of that, but it, it will take some time for that data to be quantified. Yes, sir. Last night, I think your comment was that you didn't know how many mail-in ballots had arrived yesterday, right? Do we know yet how many ballots arrived yesterday? What, what is the number of I, I don't have that with me this morning, but check on check on the dashboard, and that will be updated throughout the day. Yeah, sorry, Jan. Um, Representative Benninghoff keeps raising this point about how ballots counted may not have a you know a legible postmark on them, and raising questions about whether or not they should be counted or not. And I was, he said it's because of the prepaid envelopes that the state provided. I was wondering if you could speak to that. Sure. So I'm not sure he may be confusing. So anything that arrived yesterday, it doesn't matter whether it's postmarked or not. Anything that arrived yesterday is a valid vote. That's what Pennsylvania law has always been, right? It needs, so talking about the late arriving ballots. So the postmark, first of all, the way we did prepaid postage in Pennsylvania is we went to the counties where they are. So if they wanted it to be through their business reply mail, uh, USPS permit, we did it that way. If they wanted to literally have us reimburse them for stamps or metered postage, we did it however they want. So some of them are not even, and I don't remember how many, but we could get you that information, how many counties are using business reply mail, but those are still postmarked. They have timing marks, they are date stamped, they are still trackable by date. So it, it's a tiny fraction of any of those things. I mean, we've all had that situation where you get a letter and it's not postmarked. It's rare, right? Same for business reply mail. They do it's just, it's not accurate. They're all stamped. So if there is no mark on it, if it is one of those rare occasions, would it be counted? So under the current, under the current Pennsylvania Supreme Court decision, which is currently the law, yes. As long as it's, there's no affirmative evidence that it, it was postmarked after November 3rd, as long as it's received by November 6th at 5 p.m., it will be counted. Yes. It's my understanding that the state's website is showing 18 counties with 0% mail-in ballots counted. Is that accurate? Is, do you have any insight into that? So, you know, what I would suggest, sometimes counties are uploading on their own websites and haven't transmitted the file to the Department of State because, you know, they have their own see any, and this is what we're going to be doing throughout the day, go to the county website. You should always do that. It's a great way to double check, but we're going to be following up with all those counties to say, hey, you know, make sure you get us the files. Um, some of them, you know, this year, because we had, for the first time, we had a website that was going to itemize the mail-in ballots from the in-person ballots from the provisionals. Some of the counties, when they uploaded the results, it merged the two types into one, and that was just, they formatted it wrong. So we're working through that to make sure that the, the actual attribution of those ballots are, are right. You've noticed that there's a larger than expected number of counties that have reported. Yeah, it doesn't mean that they haven't counted. It may just mean that it's just not uploaded to the Department of State website yet. So I do urge you to check the county websites and see if that's, that's available on their website. Last thing, I'm sorry, if I can just double back on something. If I heard you correctly in your introductory remarks, it was between 2.5 and 3 million mail-in ballots, is that, and you're, and you're roughly 50%. If you could speak with as much specificity as possible regarding that, that would be helpful. Well, I think, yeah, the numbers that I gave yesterday, um, it was just under 2.6 million, as I recall. But again, I'm not sure what has additionally come in. But so as of, as of you know, yesterday, at some point, it was just under 2.6 million that had been cast. Um, and that's when I think I said it was 83% or something like that. So we can get back to you again, go on the website, you'll have that information available to you. I just don't have it at my fingertips today. Okay. Yes. Um, can you tell us how many mail-in ballots are outstanding on a county-by-county county breakdown, or is that also on the website? It's on the website. Yep. Go to, so if you go to the regular ENR reporting website, it also tells 